I still have the going live in, but I think we're live. Hello, hello, can you hear me? I think we're live. Yes, I, I think we're live. I can I can see like the, the clock going. Awesome, there was like a little bit of a delay there, but hi, welcome everybody. Super excited for today's session here with Danny. Um, if you've been to an office hours before, you've probably met Danny. Danny has an awesome YouTube channel. He's another Notion Pro super nerd. I'm really excited to finally connect today. Um, I'd love to hear from those of you that are here. I'm assuming a good chunk of you are probably students or in the academic world. So let us know what you're studying. I'm curious what people are doing and also what your experience is with Notion. It's always good to know if we got beginners, advanced, intermediate, kind of where people are at. And Danny, why don't you give us a little bit of a lowdown of kind of how you've been using Notion. I know uh, today we're talking about the academic sort of use case, but yeah, I'd just love to hear from you kind of what you want to share with us today and maybe how Notion has helped you with your dissertation. Yeah. No, she's helped me with a lot. I feel like <laughs> a lot. familiar faces in the chat, like Torin, Bass, Gail. Like I could see loads of familiar faces. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking good. through what, what's coming up because I saw someone was studying uh, philosophy. Uh, I thought that was quite interesting. So my undergraduate degree, um, to give you like a, an academic sense of where I'm at, my undergraduate degree was in sports coaching. So it was a three year three year undergrad. Um, and that was heavily focused on actually the theoretical side of coaching. So it wasn't just sport. Um, I, th I think I did maybe 30 credits in total, actually practical sport. The rest of it was theory. So wow. behavior change, pedagogy, psychology, anatomy, and physiology, loads of different modules. Um, I'm currently doing my master's dissertation, well, my master's dissertation, my master's degree in strength and conditioning, which is uh, in the UK, it's like a better PT, but I know in America and Canada, PT and s and they're sort of, they, they fight between terms. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so uh, my dissertation at the moment is actually, I had to, I, I, we mentioned before, I've changed my dissertation. So before the pandemic, my dissertation was going to be the biomechanical analysis of the trampoline compared to counter movement jump, which is jumping on the floor um, and looking at the kinematic and kinetic relationships between the two force and muscles and other stuff. Uh, so <laughs> other nerdy stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but because obviously pandemic, we couldn't get close with anyone, so we couldn't do any lab testing. So wow. what I decided to do, uh, I got three options. I either deferred, uh, I've already been in higher education for five years, so I didn't want to do another year. <laughs> You're over it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, like I'm, I'm <laughs> referencing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I could, I could have deferred, which I didn't want to do. I could have done a hypothetical, which a hypothetical biomechanical study just, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's just not possible. <laughs> Didn't feel right, yeah. yeah. Um, so I decided to do a qualitative study instead. So I've done nine interviews with coaches uh, and my I don't have a solid title. I mean, my dissertation is due in like a week and I don't have a solid title yet, um, but it's because it's, it's such a, a broad uh, sort of like area of study. It could potentially be a PhD, but I'm not doing all that. Not doing all that work. <laughs> um, so it's it's how the pandemic has either changed or not changed. So behavior changed towards using or not using digital tools in coaching. Wow. Digital tools being anything that requires a device, i.e. a phone or a laptop. So Notion obviously comes under that banner. Yeah. Any productivity tool, WhatsApp, Facebook, all the social media, anything that's digital have people increased use, increased frequency, change their in use of the tools uh, related to coaching. Wow. So, yeah. Big, that's really interesting. Yeah, really interesting. Turn. <laughs> yeah, that's cool though. It's all really, it's all connected. It's all related, right? Um, and so, you, I mean, how long have you been using Notion? It's been at least like two years, you said, or longer? Two plus years. I think, plus years? I think I'm close. So, so with, the, with the Notion Pro application thing, they asked how long I'd been using it and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I know I started using it about two and a half months before Francesco's first video. Mm. So I look back at Francesco's first video is like the beginning of uh, 2019. Um, so I started using it slightly before that. So it's like, yeah, two years to yeah, around a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and were you immediately kind of using it for your studies? Like, was that one of the first use cases that you were seeing it for? sort of um so my 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 academic journey first year i was a mess like i i would say i was Aren't probably we all like, danny come on <laughs> i was probably like a stereotypical first year student i i i did essays in like 2 hours before the deadline 
Um, I didn't do pre-reading. I'm just going to be honest. Like, uh, yeah, I, d I didn't do pre-reading. I didn't take notes in lecture. Um, I didn't really know where most of the lectures were. I was like asking flatmates, like, where are we today? What room are we in? What group am I in? What are we doing? Uh, I, just, I just didn't pay attention. Um, then halfway through second year, uh, I, I came across a couple of productivity apps. So I've been following Ali Abdul, Thomas Frank, Matt Diavella for however long their channel has been. <laughs> it's like, ages um and i was like these apps are kind of cool but i just i just can't can't get to grips with them um then i saw so i didn't i didn't see notion from francesco i saw it beforehand i can't remember how i just remember seeing it going on it was like this looks okay i guess um and i i've said this on stream a couple of times on my stream um that my first notion page was literally just a list of to-do blocks it was just like a loads and loads and loads of checkboxes um and that's how it stayed for probably like half a year <laughs> it's just i would get rid of them and then put new ones in get rid of them put new ones in i'm looking at the chat i'm like i cannot keep up with all that <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yes yeah. and so i i was i started using it as sort of like a, a just a to-do list like i didn't yeah. like to do it i just i just didn't like the look of it. It, it, it worked. Uh, same as like Things 3 um, and all the other like apps. I don't remember the name of half of them anymore. But yeah, I was just using it as like a, a really, really, really basic to-do list because I, I didn't have a paper to-do list, a calendar to-do list, mm -hmm. anything. So I was like, I, I, I need to start somewhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then after... After I got the to-do list done and databases came out, <laughs> I've said this before and it's really bad now. I I didn't really realize that properties, like I, I didn't think of making two databases. I just there you go, hundred plus properties in one database. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it it did, did not work well. Um, it it was a f it was fun, which is why I was doing it. Um, so like this is going to sound kind of nerdy. I used to play Minecraft a lot and that's how I associate like Notion. Um, and I was like, I, I sort of left Minecraft and like Notion became the new thing. Ah, uh, <laughs> so yes. Playing, building different blocks. And when updates came out, it was like the same thing. It's like, oh, there's a new block to play with. How can I integrate and build? And I was building the same thing four different ways. Just what is this? Do? How can it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, um, I'm curious how you, if you have opinions on like the potential, I, I know people, have, we've talked about this before, but that notion, it can be procrastinate planning in a way because it is, it's a different quality than other apps. There's like this, ooh, the building becomes part of the fun and then it becomes almost like more fun to play with your notion than it is to actually do the tasks on your notion page. So, <laughs> so I'm curious if you have opinions on that. Uh, it, it, you could definitely do that. I have definitely been a culprit of doing that. Um, it, the, so my, I think because of the, so going second year, third year, my mindset had to change because of personal mm. things. Um, anxiety, depression is just not a good time. Like second year, third year, uh, and notion got me through that w mm. without notion. I don't know where I would be to be honest, because it gave me like actionable things to do. Like I, mm. I can do these things I've done. I've, I feel like I've done something for the day um, and move forwards. And that's the mindset that I had to teach myself. I mean, mm. I was doing coaching and I was learning about growth mindset and Carol Dweck's work and I just wasn't applying it. I was learning it and writing essays. <laughs> I wasn't applying do as it. I say, not as I do, right? Yeah, it's way easier to tell other people what to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's um, really interesting. Yeah, my mindset sort of is is from that. So I, I don't play. So I treat Minecraft was was gaming i don't game until i've done my my to-do list mm. inbox zero whatever you call it and i take take the same approach until i have done enough tasks that i'm satisfied for the day or i feel like i just can't do anymore then i will play awesome. um yeah that that's that's my approach um some days i will wake up and i will go downstairs watch tv for an hour come up and just play on notion for two hours because i know the tasks i can do in a couple of couple of minutes other days I'll wake up and like, okay, I need to record three videos. I'm going to do that first. <laughs> then I can play a notion. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Playing a notion is a treat. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, well, do you want to, do you want to kick off your screen share and kind of give us the tour of, again, I know what you have today has evolved quite a bit um, and you, 
I know we talked about some of the changes that, that you've made in your space, maybe as a result of recent uh, insights or whatnot, but yeah, it'd be good to kind of see how you've been using it, how it's helped you with your studies, and maybe just, like you said, some of those changes of where everything used to be a page, but now you've got a different system and a different way of, of doing it. Yes, so can you see my screen? I can, looks great. Good, nice. Um, awesome. So. I guess before, d just so you're aware, guys, like I have another screen over there, which is why I'm looking over there because I'm like looking at Marie there and looking at my screen there. Um, but yeah, so my, I, I used to delete my tasks because I didn't need them. They were disposable. The la last week I decided, you know what, I'm going to keep them. Um, so my space doesn't have any of like the archivable tasks in because they've all gone. Um, and similar with my modules. So I used to have anatomy, physiology, psychology, sports coaching, pedagogics, and the rest of them. They were all modules. Um, and because I don't need them anymore, I, I just deleted them, got rid of them. Um, so there's very little left in my space that represents what it looked like when I was really heavy in study. But the structure is exactly the same. Um, the only thing that really has changed is because of self-referencing filters that came out in like March this year, my templates completely changed because mm -hmm. yeah, it just completely changed. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll start right in the dashboard. I, uh, for those of you that haven't seen my space before, I don't use a sidebar ever just full stop. Don't, don't go there. Um, I, I, I scare myself sometimes when I'm building and I'm going over here. I'm like, Oh yeah, I, for I forgot this thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> that that is the extent of my sidebar and I don't so that's my public page which is linked here so I click on there uh and it will go to oh let's hide that actually <laughs> come on there we go and it goes to my public page um Very so I don't have to go to the sidebar um and because I'm in the app uh my top page on in my sidebar is my dashboard um and you can actually use a, a, a keyboard shortcut so for I'm on Windows I use control one um, and that will take me back to my dashboard page. It's the top page in the sidebar. So I don't have to ever go into my sidebar to navigate. Um, and I've been debating what to call this, whether it's like a tab bar, a nav bar, or, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but what this is, is it's a global block. It's a text block um, with emojis in it. And each emoji has a link to a different page. This is a family page, business page, resources, templates, exercise, and it goes all the way along. Danny, could could you make another one? Because uh, we did have Shubham in the sidebar said, how did you do that? It'd be cool just to show folks, because I know it's a bit more of an advanced use case if people are just getting used to Notion. So maybe we could, could we make up a link even just to show that you can link any block? Yeah. Yeah. Just to um, I mean, I could I could do it down here, just like, oh, my TV is going to shut off. That's not great. Um, so I'm going to have a link there. Um, can you see? Yeah, you can see. Uh, <laughs> let, let's go with a laughing face. Um, so I'm going to go into the block, copy the link, highlight. Oh, that was Control V to paste it, and now when I click on there, it's going to highlight the block. And yeah, and with my space, these are not linked to blocks, they're linked to pages, databases. So this one's my dissertation. Uh, and when we go further into it, my dissertation is a page inside of a database, um, which is actually inside of a page, which is inside of a database. But <laughs> <laughs> Inception, yeah. Yeah, um, and I, I can link straight there. Um, yeah, so uh, I will get rid of that. Otherwise, I'll forget. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is, so this is a global block. So whenever I change anything here, it changes everywhere else in my space. So if I quickly go to my review page, uh, there it is again. So no matter what page I go in, in my space, this nav bar is always here and it's always going to change. So if I put uh, hello in this nav bar and I go back to my home, it will show, I'm going to be bouncing around all over the place. There we go. Uh, <laughs> in this one. Uh, and it's going to show in every other iteration of that global block, which is in uh, which is in templates, which is in areas, which is in pages. It's everywhere because that's, that's my navigation. Yeah. 
So as we scroll down, this this is the this is where I live. I I live on this page, um, and yeah, that, that that's pretty much it for when it comes to what what I see on a daily basis. Uh, I've done a couple of videos on like my day in Notion, but th this is it. So because I'm doing my dissertation, some of these other tasks haven't been completed. Um, there you go. This is the office hour, so I'm going to get rid of that one. There we go. I've completed that. Woo, <laughs> looks slightly better. Um, and what this is, is this is a linked view of my task database. So I have a master task database that is linked everywhere in my space. Um, and this is specifically filtered. Um, I'm trying to keep an eye on chat, but it's so quick. <laughs> Gail was just asking, just to confirm, you can make this bar with any emoji in the, in the Notion emoji library, but you can't do it with JPEG or PNG file you've used as icons for pages, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, I have asked Notion. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you, you can't a link. You can't copy a link from anywhere in Notion onto anything else. It's the same with um, icons. So with the icons for the pages, this is why I don't use personalized icons um, because you can't put the icon into the bar because it's it's an image and you can't attach a link to an image. Um, so I use the emojis for my databases. That way, it matches up with my nav bar main reason cool. yep so you guys have probably seen this filter now um the essentially what i'm seeing is any done task that is not finished so tasks that i need to do this is uh, a formula for my recurring tasks some of my recurring tasks um i may get into that i may not depends where the conversation goes um i have a video on how that whole recurring task thing is set up. It's like 18 minutes long and formula heavy. So if you really want to nerd out, go for it. Um, and I also have a free template on the page uh, on my uh, public page that you can just duplicate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we've got a filter for task today and task before today, because sometimes I don't get tasks done, but I still need to do them. And then I have tagged not client because I was just playing around with client and business tasks. Um, but I don't typically go in there anymore. So that's probably something I could probably change. But yeah, uh, th this is literally where I live. Um, then I have my notes database and I would class this as a master notes database probably. Um, and I clip everything to it whenever I make a note in a meeting, a note in a lecture. When I, when I was an academic, so I'd take a note in lecture, it would go in my notes database, not in the lecture. Um, so you can see this is Seth Blog's post from probably today. Um, there are probably videos here. There you go. That's a YouTube video. There's probably some articles in here as well. Actually, that one might be an article. Um, let's have a look. I was going to say, I'm like, what relations do you have in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so this is an article. This is a massive article. Um, so in this master notes database, it's related to my areas. So I don't have a tags database. Right. I use areas as tags. So I use the relation as a tag. Um, then I have person. So if the note is in a meeting, I can relate it to the person. So when I go to the person dashboard, I can just filter for notes related to the person. Um, at uni, the area would be a module. So uh, biology, physiology, whatever, that would be the area. And that would be tagged with the area. Um, and then all the notes for that area module would show up. And if I'm going to the specific lecture, they would all be related through. Then I have flashcards, which is uh, my flashcards database. The main reason for this relation here is for self-referential filters. Um, because I don't really make any flashcards here. I'll make them in the page. Projects, tasks, which are just across the whole of just Notion. Anyone that uses Notion will have a master task, master project database. Um, for notes, this is this would be my lecture. So I use my tasks as events, which I'll get to in a second. Um, so my this note would be related to the lecture. So this could be lecture one in here. It would be biology in here. And this note would be related to both of those things. So I could go from the note to the lecture or the lecture to the note, or I could go from the area dashboard to the lecture or the note. Um, so it's all linked everywhere. Uh, date cr uh, created, that's for metadata, for filtering and sorting some specific views. 
the URL to go back to the original note. The date property, which is specific to some notes, uh, that's a processing of note thing, which I will probably go on later because it would make sense to go through later. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yeah, so when so I'll capture the note, which is going in there, then it's in my dashboard. So I know I need to do something with it. I'll then process the note. So I'll come in here. I'll either scrap it and add a template to it and then put it in. So I'll, I'll cut it and then paste it in once the template's in. So all the default stuff to put in. Then because the template will add a tag, it will go to the space. Then for a second process, I will then add something to it. Some, some places it's a date, some places it's another relation, other places I could add another note. So I could have a note related to a note, which is related to an event. And as you can imagine, that just goes all the way down, which is what this relation is. So for an example, those of you that are familiar with Thiago Forte, I know you're familiar with Thiago um, and the para system. The para article was a note in my notes database. But then I made a note of the P section, which became its own page. So I had the P section as a note related to the para section article. But then inside the P section, I had notes on parts of that. So I had notes inside notes inside notes, which was inside an article. <laughs> yeah. Inception, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why Danny has a space background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I'd have flashcards linked to those really small notes. Um, and I would only need to see those flashcards. But if I needed to go, I, I, I look at the flashcard and go, oh, where did, where, where, where did I get that from? How did I get to this conclusion? I can go to the link, which goes to the note. If I read that and go, I don't know, I then go to the higher up note and then the higher up note and then the article. It never really got that far, but sometimes it did. <laughs> uh, then we have frequency. And reviewing is something that I, I do everywhere in my space. So you'll see later on when I go to my areas, I have a review. So I review every area. So now they're like business style areas, but bef before they were modules. Um, and this is the same principle in the note. So it means that I'm going to review a note. So if I have take the article or take this article, um, I haven't actually processed this article. So I have read it once when I captured it. I thought, oh, that's good. I'll capture it and I haven't processed it yet. When I process it, uh, I will add a number in here, whether one, two or three. Um, mm -hmm. And what that will do is depending on the date I put in or the date it was created, I think, um, it will throw out a review date and then it will appear in my review space. Uh, to make that make sense while we're still here, I'm gonna go into the review space. So those notes or resources that I need to review will appear here when I need to review them. Um, any new flashcards that are due will appear here. Any areas I need to review will be ticked, hence the review dashboard. <laughs> um, and do you want to share any of those filters too so people can see like uh, what oh, filters yeah. do you have on notes and ideas or on the flashcards? Cool. Um, this, this is mainly for uh, the area tag. So if it was all of my notes, every single note that I've ever made uh, would be reviewed and I don't want to review all of them. It's the, the big big articles, the big lectures, the big podcasts, all of that sort of stuff um, that I want to review. Uh, and this is the review formula that we looked at in, in the notes database uh, is on or before today uh, because it's a date. Then for the flashcards, it's the same principle. Review date is on or before today. Uh, and then in my areas database. So this is actually a different database to the one we were just in. So you'll see different properties, um, but it's it's the same principle with the review. So if it's ticked, if it's not, um, but instead of it being a date, it's a tick box because in here, we got a, a very, a, a nice formula. <laughs> <laughs> Clean, tidy. Uh. <laughs> yeah, uh, a fairly nice formula. And this is just saying, what's the date between now and last reviewed, which is this property here, 9th of September. Uh, what's that in days? Is it bigger than uh, the review date frequency, which is this property here? If it is, show. If it's not, don't. The reason I have this as a tick box and I don't have this as a date is because I use this as a roll up. So any any beginners in Notion has probably boom over their head already. Um, 
So this is a tick box. So when I have a roll up, I can count the the amount of areas I need to review, um, which is if we go back to my dashboard. So remembering that tick box, <laughs> everything is like so integrated. And when I go it's to explain it, yeah. like, <laughs> it shows here. So this is counting how many of those boxes are ticked. Mm. It shows zero. So I can see on my dashboard how many areas I need to review today, how many flashcards I need to review today. So I don't have to go into that review page to find out. Um, and then I've got all the reminders that sometimes I forget to do. And this this changes drastically. Like you could come back tomorrow and one of these would be deleted and another one put in. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, this is this is probably the nastiest looking filter you will see. <laughs> uh, so I've got date is today because I only want to see the daily reminders for today. That's for the tick boxes. And then I have to relate every single area because it's a page in the areas database. I have to relate it to each page in my daily reminders so that I can get the roll up to work. Mm. So I have the filter filtered for every area <laughs> so that every single page in the daily reminders is related to every single area so whenever an area is ticked it will show in the roll-up same with the cards um, and then i have name contains this and that's just so that the name contains something and it's not just titled untitled because that just <laughs> yeah I, I just didn't like it <laughs> nobody likes an untitled <laughs> exactly i i did just start with the emoji but um, uh, actually, and because this, so I actually figured this, I didn't figure this out, but I realized if I wanted to, this is where habit tracking can kind of come in my space. I don't really habit track, but this is a linked database. So I can jump straight to, this is going to show really bad on exercise because I've been doing my dissertation. <laughs> no, no judgment here. <laughs> uh, this is going to jump straight to the database, which shows me everything. You can see the dates, 11, 10, 9, 8, blah, 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 all the way down. Um, and then I've got kind of a habit tracker right there and I don't have to do anything. And as you can see in the, in the breadcrumb, like we are, where are we? The dashboard review areas, reminders, daily reminders. Um, but I, I can see everything. Uh, and this is where I was done football training and all the other stuff. Um, and control one, go back to my dashboard. And I know we've got some folks whose like brains are not just blown, but melting. Uh, but just wanted to encourage folks to like, I know, you know, Danny's a pretty advanced user of Notion too. And I know that he's worked his way up to this setup. The more that you discovered what was possible, you kind of iterated your way up to a really advanced system that worked for you. But it's not like, I, I feel like um, a beginner person may be looking at that. It might seem very intimidating, but you can inch your way there as your space becomes more useful and you kind of figure out where there's friction and, and what you need to track, right? Yeah, and like I said at the at the beginning of the stream, like my my space was a to-do list, which is this. Like the, the only real difference is this is a database rather than just a load of blocks. Uh, and then I had a second column, which was notes, which is this same thing instead of it being just loads of text blocks that had no organization it's now a database uh and then we got the reminders here um and then we have my calendar so i don't use google calendar i don't use any calendar anymore i did use google calendar but now i don't um mm -hmm. so everything's in here and this is my task database now if jonathan's watching jonathan is another notion pro he doesn't like this <laughs> and he, numerous times he just doesn't like it doesn't get on with it right. um but so these are tasks in my task database and these in all seriousness i didn't really expect direct, uh, i was just looking at something chat um so these would be lectures academically speaking these would be my lectures um mm. you can't actually see anything that i've done because obviously the filter oh excuse me tag is event uh mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just because there's that was something I was playing with. I could probably get rid of that, but I don't want to in case something pops up. Yeah. Um, and then done is not done, not ticked. So actually, if I do that, it will show me. Ooh, there we go. Stuff. <laughs> um, and then we can untick that because I don't need to see those. Uh, and the reason. Sorry. Oh, just interesting, right? Like every every pro has such a different way of showing the calendar events and and that sort of thing. So no, it's cool that. If that works for you, tasks as events as well, and that's just like a tag, that's that's really interesting. So when so when it's up here, 
uh, you probably saw earlier with uh, the Crowdcast, it had event right next to it. Right. So it comes up in my task list. Um, same with publishing. So whenever I have a blog post or a YouTube video or you, uh, in um, academic sense, an essay due, it was publishing. So it would still be on my to-do list, but it would be publishing or event. Um, right. So I could see all the lectures together. Um, yeah. Uh, and the, the main reason I have it in here is also for templates and how I create certain things. So you can see I'm streaming or, or on Sunday, obviously. And this is a task in my task database. And when I'm creating a YouTube video, I can drag across all of the tasks and drop them into my task database. And this is going to show up. So I know I'm streaming on Sunday and I know I haven't prepared for next Sunday because there's no stream task there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but because it's a task, it's it's there and done. It's not a separate calendar. Uh, yeah, interesting. But, actually, if I quickly show, so that's just a task that I, I've randomly done, and it just puts a question mark on it. It's it's not something I need to do. It's not tied to a project, to an event, to anything. It's just that's something I should do. Um, and and it goes in, it goes into the task database, and I will just put push that template. This is the events template, uh, and this is a cool template. So the events template, uh, if we go to edit, because I don't really want to add an event, and then because then I'll click it done, and then I'll uh, yeah, I'll just be, I'll just look, be looking back and going, what is that? Uh, so I can click on the event template. It gives it the tag automatically, and it throws the notes database in, uh, which is self self referencing filter goes in there. So if there was a note to take for the event, it would be related to whatever the event was. Uh, I did click off, didn't I? There we go. Uh, the call template is exactly the same. Uh, it's just got a different emoji because it's a different type of call. Dissertation template relates. So I can go into here because it's not actually showing any of my dissertation. <laughs> uh, so it's already got the project related. So that means whatever task I put in, I push the dissertation template, it attaches it to the dissertation project, which then retrospectively adds it to the project rollup, which then changes my progress because that's a formula. Yeah. If, if you, you go don't deeper in Danny's YouTube uh, channel for some of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was going to, like, yeah. Um, and then again, it's related to resources. Um, so it's got the area tag. So when I go into the area, it's already done, set. Um, and then I think that's it for that tag. Yeah, that's it for that template. It's just those two things in there. Uh, monetization, that's just an area tag. Mm -hmm. Football's just an area tag. And birthday template is kind of like recurring task related, which I guess, I should I go into that one next? Actually, before I move, <clears throat> The, we can check in on some of the questions that have popped up too, just to see yeah. if, if that's yeah, uh, it. Okay, let's see. We've got a couple. Yes, this is available to watch after. You can either watch it on YouTube or watch it at the same URL here. Um, okay, ooh, can we expect some type of annotation feature? Now, while uh, you know, Danny and I are we're notion pros and we you know have a connection with the team, we don't always know what some of those features are. But if it's something that you want to see, there is like a feature request button that you can use. So um, I don't know anything necessarily. Danny, I don't know if you've heard anything about annotations as a feature, or um, maybe you could speak to in your own studies or in your own experience, maybe how have you um, dealt with having to put these papers together that require lots of different, you know, sources and inputs. Do you have opinions on that? Yeah. So when it comes to uh, uh, like my sister's going to uni as well in like a week, um, when it comes to annotating notes, if you prefer writing notes, like on an iPad or anything like that, and you're annotating notes, it would make more sense to do it in an app specific for that mm -hmm. and then store it in Notion. So the way I look at notes is you've got the capture process, whatever that looks like, the storing process, again, whatever that looks like, and then the reviewing process. And the reviewing process for me is the one that really matters. Um, and depending on how you review your notes, whether it is flashcards, whether it is reading verbatim, which I, I don't promote, but hey, if that's how you think you learn, <laughs> go for it. Um, yeah. Uh, so it would depend how you review it. If you review it in flashcards, then you need to store it in a way that is easy for you to make those flashcards. And for me in my space, flashcards are in my Notion. Um, storage is in my Notion and capturing for me was typing. So that was in my Notion. Um, and whenever I clipped an article to this notes database, 
I could then make notes on that and relate it to my area. And again, it's all sorted. I can make flashcards from and everything's linked. Um, but if you're if you're annotating images and you want to like draw lines and things across, I would do it in another app. And then if you need to store it in Notion, like put it as an image. Gotcha. Are you, uh, were you planning on kind of diving into your flashcard system? Cause I'm, I'm quite curious kind of what your, what the process is, how that looks. Maybe, I don't know if it's, if we have enough time to cover that today, but it'd be cool to kind of see how you've been, you know, creating yeah. those and seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually going to go into the review section next. Sure. In case anyone's curious, I don't like the notion dividers, as you can obviously tell, cause I have this. Um, <laughs> And because they're, they're just too small, they're too thin. Mm -hmm. The For people that want to use this, I again, I have a free template download on the public page, which is linked on YouTube, like every single video. <laughs> and my um, this is inline maths. Um, it, it sounds scary, but it's really not. And it's really, really easy. The only downside is if you change the size of your window, this doesn't change. So on your phone, <laughs> it'll show like this bit and there, and then you can scroll to the right and it'll show like the rest of the... <laughs> the rest of it going on um but yeah so if i click in here you can see this is all <laughs> it is so it's make it large so i could because this is a text block within my math i could make it a heading one two or three um i could make it large huge small tiny I could, there's so many options um orange because that's that's my color i sort of showed marie at the beginning of stream that my room's orange <laughs> Uh, that wall isn't obviously, but the rest of it is orange. Uh, and then these are just emojis from the emoji menu with words, obviously. Um, and I have these everywhere in my space um, to, to just segregate things. It's just uh, a quick, easy way to go. Oh, that's how you do it. So uh, we'll go to review. I actually have a video uh, on how to make my flashcard system. It's called Space mm. Repetition. Uh, oh. So if you do want to build it from scratch, watch the video. I think it's like 10 minutes-ish. Um, and like I said at the beginning, I don't have many flashcards now. I don't know how many I have, and I don't really want to show them all because they're just going to like... <laughs> Explode. <laughs> I don't know how many there are. Um, but what I can do is I can make a new card and then show the, the, the database setup. And it's very, very basic when you, when you look at it. Uh, it's a YouTube link. So if there's a video for the flashcard, it goes in there. Uh, a wiki link, again, Wikipedia, it's like it's just a go-to for information. I know like it's not academically backed and it, it's no peer research reference, blah, 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 but um, still useful. <laughs> uh, again, link to my areas. So my area is like a tag. So if I wanted to create decks of cards, so when I had, when I was studying, I would have the flashcards related to physiology in there. And then I can filter my flashcards database for the area. Um, so I can have decks of cards filtered for whatever the area is. Then I have my review. Um, I think that's the big one. Yeah, that's the big one. We'll leave that one. Uh, then I have the date wrong. I'll, I'll go back to it, don't worry. Uh, then I have the date wrong. So that's when I've added the card or got the card wrong. Mm -hmm. um, then I have card count which is literally just for a roll up in another database stage, which is one to 10. So if I go into the card and I get it right, I move the stage up. So to two or to three to four, etc. If I get it wrong, I will move it all the way back down to one and say date wrong. And then whatever the date was that I got it wrong. Uh, and then this is the note relation. So if I've made a flashcard from a note, this is where I'd reference it. These are old templates um, because I haven't made flashcards in a while. This is where I've also put quotes. So for people that want to have like uh, recurring quotes or quotes that pop up to them, um, same principle. Uh, it's you put the quote in and it will appear whenever it needs to. Um, and I'm going to show you this formula for those of you that don't like formulas, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look away. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I haven't changed this and this really irritates me because I have the if syntax and I'm, I'm going like formula nerdy here, uh, but you don't have to have the if, you can just put a question mark and I, I need to change this. Um, but yeah, so to very simply go over this, what this is doing is saying if stage two, which was the dropdown, uh, if it equals stage two, then look at date wrong. 
and that's this property. So when I last got it wrong, um, and look at that in days. And then that's kind of like nested all together. Um, but essentially, if it's stage two, add one day. If it's stage three, add three days. Stage four, seven days, 15, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. And it looks like some of the syntax has gone funny as well when there's been a Notion update because <laughs> <laughs> some, some of those should be and shouldn't be. Yeah, ah, that's, it works. Um, yeah, the this these numbers are dependent on how frequent you want the flashcard to turn up. Um, I, I, do you want me to go into the maths behind it? Uh, I mean, I don't know how many newbies we have here. Like, how do folks? How do folks feel about? I, I will very. I will try and explain it really quickly. Um, <laughs> So date wrong is date, date zero. That's when you got it wrong. And then we're going to add one. So that's the next time you're going to review it. When you're reviewing that card for the next time, it's actually one day further than day zero. Um, and if I get it right again, I go to stage two. If I have this as a two, because I want it two days, it would only actually go one day in front of the day that I got it right, because I'm now one day ahead. So what I need to do is if I want there to be a two difference at stage two, I need to do the difference I want, which is two, add whatever it was previously, which is the one. So it's one add two makes three. Then we've got, I want it to be a four day difference at stage uh, three, I think, or stage four. Um, so I'm doing four add three, which makes seven. And that's how it adds up, which is why you see like 501 days. I'm not actually gonna see a card and then not see it for two years. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's just because that's the the date wrong is day zero, which is way back. So awesome. I, I just saw Fibonacci in the in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, like Danny goes, you know, he's got so many great videos that go into more depth about some of this stuff. So um, and those are probably be great because then you can like pause, rewind, copy paste, all that good stuff. So we could definitely go way deeper on some of that stuff. Um, I, I feel kind of like. Not, not necessarily like cheated or bad or anything like that, but most of the templates are, are completely free on my public page. So if you if you have the patience to just go into my page and just search in the database like flashcards, and just duplicate it. it, it's there, it's done. <laughs> um, I, I've been told by That's some awesome. business people that I should charge for that, but yeah. <laughs> all, all in good time. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so... I mean, that's that's the the flashcards. We've sort of gone over areas. Like I I could talk about one database for hours, <laughs> um, but I think I think what would make sense is to have a look at one of these areas. YouTube, we, I'll let you choose YouTube or blogging because both of these are f frequently used. Well, I'm just curious. Like, are there other folks here uh, that are thinking about you know Notion for academic studies too? Like, I'm curious if there's anything else that you mm. could share around, even just like. You know, you said in the beginning you were kind of a bad student and you kind of struggled to kind of like keep on top of everything. And I know you've got this great task database now, um, but I'm curious maybe how, like, are you doing the writing of your dissertation in there? I guess, um, what is some of that more, I guess, academic wrangling of your schedule and just kind of making sure you're, you're managing, managing everything look like? Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of like how I could, I mean, I know you can't like share your dissertation because yeah. of like privacy yeah. stuff. So, so I understand. The writing of the essay is, is I mean, it's, it's individual anyway. For me, <laughs> for me, I have a planning page and then a writing page because they are mm -hmm. completely separate and dissertation. If you have it all in one Word document, which is how I did it before Notion, oh, you're just endless scrolling up and down and copy, yeah. paste and cut and the rest of it. Um, but when it comes to the the academic studies going through, if I just do like a, actually, if I make a, a dummy area uh, very quickly, you could probably see. Oh, let, let's, let's hope list. this. <laughs> I love that. Yes. It's like, you always uh, want to like zoom into someone's space. Ooh, what's in the impossible list? <laughs> uh, new area template. Cool. So what, what I've done is basically created a topic. Uh, or a module or whatever you call it. Uh, do, 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 come on. It's, it's trying to work out with the filters now. Um, so now, because of the self-referencing filter, this is already related to biology. And then 
my project. So this dashboard is consistent across my, my entire space. It's basically the same everywhere. Uh, this contains, again, biology. And then my tasks, again, uh, will contain biology. And then not review, that's because recurring tasks, but yeah, that could probably be taken out. And so, so do you do I, you think about like papers as projects? Like in a in a school context, is that kind of how you think of yeah. projects? Yeah. So a project for me is anything that has an end date that requires something else. A project can't be done in like a day. Well, shouldn't be done in a day. <laughs> you can do an assignment in a couple of hours. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> Somehow I managed to get a first um, in my in my undergrad doing doing essays in like a couple hours, but I think that was more luck than judgment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So and then if we have if we have a lecture, let's say we've got a lecture that day, um, I would come in here, uh, and then I would normally have a template for the lecture. Um, mm -hmm. So let's just say it's an event. I would push on that. I would. Depending on how the workflow goes, I may plan it in the space because from my experience, the university timetables were pants and we were shown like four different classrooms at the same time and all different module codes. And I'm like, so where am I? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, and then I'm going to relate this to, normally this would be in the template. Uh, relate that to biology. Come on, Notion, keep up. I can't handle your epic databases. <laughs> I, uh, my, my laptop probably has something to do with it as well. <laughs> um, so this is, this is now a lecture, and these are the notes. So when I'm taking notes in the lecture, I would take the note here, um, and that would be related to this. Uh, and now when I go into, boom, 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 uh, I would have a tab bar up here, but it's it's just been created, so it's going to be in my areas. Oh look, there we go. <laughs> review, review, review in action. I need to review this space. Uh, so I'm going to come into here and review the space because I've literally just made it, and I'm not going to change that actually, just so you can see the roll up on the dashboard. Um, why is that not sure? Oh, it's because that, okay. Now I'm going to have to troubleshoot that because that's going to irritate me. That should be showing. Name does not contain review. Interesting. Yeah, that, that's just because of uh, the review, the review task that I did have in my space. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to nervous <laughs> sweat. Yes, nervous <laughs> sweat. Why is that uh, not work? Fix it, Danny. Figure it out. <laughs> That should be showing. Is oh. there a review date? Right. Did they say it? Uh, it might be. It might be because the calendar by is by last the the other date instead of that date because I mm. added. So if it's calendar by, I'm going to be irritated. I'm going to have to change the template. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't created an area in so long, so I guess I haven't really troubleshooted the template for a while. <laughs> You can see real real life working with Notion, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the shortcut I just used was control enter to make the page bigger. Just to, just in case anyone is curious. Was it the calendar by? It was the calendar by. There it is. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. I need to change that in the in the template. <laughs> um I it, it defaults to that one and I don't understand why. Like I, I even moved the due date above. The, the last scene in the property. Yeah. Anyway, I was, yeah, so, I was going to ask that. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, because because uh, that's that's something that happens. But if we did it, uh, yeah. So I moved the due date up here purely for the reason that that would, apparently it's just, but yeah. Um, so I have my lecture here uh, and then I would I would relate this lecture or well, I'd relate the le the notes to the lecture and the notes would then show in here Mm -hmm. um, and then if I have an assignment due, I will have the assignment in here. So this would be a pro and actually let's just, we've got an assignment due tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> let's add that. <laughs> uh, oh, this, this is, yeah. So these are all the templates I'm currently using and I'm not going to go into those cause that, that would be like that. I've got videos on each template almost. Wow. Um, 
but yeah, the whole working process, but this would be an assessment uh, essay. I've already got the due date because I'm in the area. It's already tagged to biology because it's in the area. Um, and then I would, I could potentially assign the, the, the lecture to it, but I didn't. I just assigned the notes to it. And the notes mainly that I assigned to the area were articles. So mm -hmm. this is where the, the clipping of the notes database is really useful. So I was reading an article about something uh, and I was like, I could use that. I'm going to clip that. And I clipped it into my dashboard. Then when I process that, I can either process it as a resource and then I would review the resource or I could attach it to a module. Um, so the note would appear here in the module. So I, I would have like a list of articles um, that could relate to biology or physiology or whatever. Um, and then I can relate that to the assignment. So I already have like half of a lit review done before I even start the essay, mm. um, which was really useful. Yeah, <laughs> really useful. especially if you're on a tight timeline. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. That's um, great. Actually, I, I just remember this is really bad for me, from from me. I I have a student workspace template that I made. Um, let's come into here because I made a video about it, and that that process is. So what I did is I created all of that. Uh, actually, it's not going to show in there, is it? It's going to be. It's, it's going to. Where is it going to be? Oh, it's going to be in yeah. Um, but once I've set it up, it's just all automatic and I don't have to think about it. Um, so what I've done is I've, I've stripped down all of the formulas, all of the links everywhere and just given you like real bare bones of that process. Here we go. Um, so that's tasks and this task database is extremely minimal. It's got assignment link, a date and a done. Uh, then we've got yeah. the upcoming lectures, which in my space is my project. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of like my areas database. Mm -hmm. My lectures and tasks I've put together in my space, but I split them up here because right. I know some people that wanted to see this prefer to separate them. So I did. Yeah. Um, so in this one, you'd have the, the lectures so you can relate it to the topic in my space. It's areas, flashcards, same thing due date and then you'd have the roll up of the assignment and the roll up of the due date for whatever the assignment was. Um, you've got the topic, which is a dashboard in its own, the flashcards, and then the same sort of like uh, concept as MySpace, the lectures in there. Uh, I don't know what this template is going to look like. I'm going to have to get rid of that because this is actually a duplicatable template that people are like. <laughs> uh, Dun, dun, dun. This is great. So this is kind of like what it looked like before, what it looks like now. It's kind of a simplified version. So is this yeah. available for folks to to download? Cool. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's actually on Gumtree. It's one of the like you saw the two templates. This is the I think it's like it's it's, it's so cheap. I, I don't know what it is. I spoke to John and John was like, "You need to quadruple that." <laughs> <laughs> Get it now um, while it's cheap before Dan gets the price up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is basically what it looked like. Uh, so this is this is like my areas dashboard, what we were just in in MySpace, but this is a topic. Um, so this would be in MySpace tasks here. It's lectures, lecture one, lecture two. This is flashcards. So in MySpace, I don't have this in my area because it's in my review page. Mm -hmm. um, but this is in this. So this is where like the deck of cards could come in. So this would be your topic one deck of mm -hmm. cards that you need to review. Uh, and then your lecture calendar and everything is related and there's templates in here for all the stuff, but I'm not going to go through the whole template because <laughs> like this template is a space on its, on its own. <laughs> That's and, uh, awesome. I need to get rid of something. But I think that could be a good, that could be a good starting point for folks that, you know, are maybe a little intimidated by some of the more advanced formulas and stuff, but then, mm -hmm. you know, you could download something like this, check it out go check out some of Danny's videos and figure out which ones make sense for you, right? Because again, every every pro, every Notion user kind of has a different way of visualizing the information based on your own needs. So I think it's just good to kind of have these starting points and then you can you can take it yeah. with it. Yeah, and like in my space, these are actually dashboards in my area, which I'll go to after this actually, because I think this might be interesting for you to see. Yeah. Um, 
but in here because i don't have an areas database here it, they're just hidden there and for whoever asked at the beginning excuse me this is linked to this <laughs> so when i go into here and i go copy link that is the link that is pasted on this emoji um so i can click on there and it will take me into the task dashboard which is here which is the the page that we were just looking at mm -hmm. on the sidebar here because they go to the same place uh so you go there and uh, this is like proof just just to prove that i'm not <laughs> <laughs> it works <laughs> yeah so there we go and it goes to the same same place uh because i prefer emojis that's just the way that i like to jump around my space yeah oh, i see tem in chat finally getting finally getting me on <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah so has anyone else got any like specific academic questions before i go into the area space uh, yeah, let us, yeah let us know in the chat i know some of the questions were a little bit more about like will this be available yes this is recorded uh, you can definitely you'll be able to check it out on youtube after um I, oh someone also asked how often do we do these office hours we do these every week and there's even more um like will nut does some of the more notion for team stuff as well so if you go to the crowdcast uh, notion crowdcast page there's that little uh, notion link at the top of your screen you'll be able to see all of the events that are there's usually at least one per week sometimes more so um and all of september is all sort of back to school themed so we've got a number of uh, other um, academic. We did homeschooling last week. We've got one on online courses. So people who manage their own online courses and doing all the planning of that inside of Notion too. So lots more to come on the schooling side of things. But yeah, let us know if you have any other um, either specific questions about Danny's space or or how to manage this stuff. And then otherwise we can jump in onto uh, the areas. Yeah. Yeah, uh, actually, just, just as like a, a side note, I, I stream every Sunday on YouTube, which is kind of like it is notion but it isn't notion like it will be notion start start with i'll be talking with someone about notion and then it can deviate to productivity task management time management and yeah we've gone into like journaling a couple of times comparing apps like it meaning it of notion, life existentialism it, yeah <laughs> it goes everywhere like some of the guys in chat can definitely attend to that <laughs> that's awesome um and i think yeah, so last last Sunday, I actually built the skeleton structure of my space from scratch. So I think I've called it how to build your second brain in Notion, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and it's about three hours long. <laughs> um, yeah, and it it I I built my, so I, I named it because I felt bad. Like August Bradley has PPV. Do you use Para, like from, from Tiago? Uh, and then like David Allen's got GTD and that's what Kehi uses. And I'm like, I'm jealous, I don't really have one. So I came up with one um, and I was like, that doesn't sound cool. So I added an S on the end, so it's pants. So that is the <laughs> system I use. I use the pants system. <laughs> Love it. Uh, which stands for projects, areas, notes, tasks, and then space repetition. And the only reason mm. that's not there is because it makes pants. So. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and I, I spent just over three hours building pants. Um, <laughs> and I, yeah, there, there's much more to it. But this Sunday, I plan on going. To, I just Danny's pants deeper yeah. into the pants. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear right keep it pg uh, um, yeah <laughs> we uh, talked yeah, about and, this danny <laughs> yeah um yeah and this sunday i plan on going through my space similar to this um but going sort of a little, a little bit more nerdy <laughs> a little That's bit awesome. more nerdy and i'm gonna get jonathan on and jonathan's got some 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 questions to ask so i'm, I'm sure there'll be banter between the two of us as well <laughs> awesome <laughs> uh right so let's go so the the storage of my databases. I think, I think for for Will, he calls them like here databases and contextual dashboards. I think are his two thing for Bulletproof. Um, I don't have a a database storage thing. It doesn't exist. Um, and this was actually asked on stream last week why I review my task database. So my master task database. This relates back to what I said earlier. My master task database is inside a page in my areas database, okay? Which allows me to review my tasks 
when I need to because it's an area. My, my tasks are an area. And the way, similar to Tiago, I define an area as something that just keeps going. There's no like end date. Um, and I, I, I used to have tasks separate. And then I realized, well, tasks don't end. Like, unless you stop doing things, tasks don't stop. Um, so I was like, I might as well put it in my areas database. And then it worked. I was like, oh, let's put projects in there as well. Um, so I have a task dashboard. Like all of my areas are dashboards. So I store my master task database in a page called tasks. Um, now Notion's deciding to get confused. <laughs> Where do I go? Oh, you got no tasks due today, Danny. You're, you're good. <laughs> Uh, and this this emoji you'll you'll see in a second is cool. There we go, there we go. Um, and it's right here. So this is my task dashboard, which is a page in my areas database, which holds my master task database. Right. Um, so this is the original version of my task database, and this is the only one of its kind. <laughs> <laughs> And it shows recently done tasks. So mm. this is filtered for today. So these are tasks I've done today, but I've actually done like way more than that. And I'm actually, I actually have, um, but they were just overdue. Um, <laughs> so I had, uh, so what have I done? I've done 14 other tasks today on top of this, but they were all supposed to be done beforehand and I just hadn't done them. Right. Um, this is can useful. I ask too, can I ask about your your task management uh, system specifically in terms of how far in advance are you planning out your tasks and kind of I know everyone's different and you know we have things on our list that don't always get done even though we were intending for them to get done and I noticed you had like due dates I know August Bradley's talked about that as well like do dates so these are like the day that I'm working on the thing not the day that it's due but I'm curious if you can speak to a little bit of that like are you planning all your tasks the night before or the week before I guess how much um, is it as needed? Like, what's your system look like? Depending on the task, um, if if so, my due date is the the date I do the task. My due date is the due date of the project. So, like, must be um, done by versus I'm going to work on it. Yeah. Well, basically, if I've got a task that I need to do after the due date of the project, to then uh, like the project's not done because I've got something yeah. <laughs> to do. Um, so, and I have that roll up in in my task database purely for that reason, just so that I don't go, oh, I need to push that task, which I don't really push tasks, um, but it just means that I don't push my task. So this is a due date of the task, and this is the due date, which is the due date of the project. This isn't related to a project, so there's no gotcha. due date. Gotcha. Um, if we go into my YouTube space after this, I think it may answer some of those questions. Um, but yeah, I mean, th this dashboard is really small. Um, and this is this is like my recently done task. And the reason this is here is because in my dashboard, when I tick a task off, it disappears. If I tick a task off by accident, or before I've actually done it, I then have to go searching and trying to find that task. And it's a pain in the bum sometimes. So yeah. I was like, let's just do it here. So you can see office hours. So if I tick that box, let's do it because uh, practice, it's now disappeared from here and it will now be in my main dashboard. These tasks are tomorrow tasks. So I can come in here and look and go, these are all the tasks I'm going to add on to all the tasks I currently need to do for today. That looks like a lot, but it's really not. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so my my tasks are like publishing task. This for this is a blog post you can see from the emoji. This is literally a case of going into my WordPress website and clicking publish. That's it. Th that's the task. And then I'm done, which is like 20 seconds. Um, this is a create, which is just because I've already scripted the blog post. So this create task is actually copying the script that I've scripted in Notion and pasting it into my WordPress blog page and then just putting like the, the blog image for the thing. So all these tasks are really, really quick tasks. But if I don't have them in my task database, I will inevitably forget. Yeah, they will not get done. Do you do any yeah. pre-planning around, um, oh, I know how many things I've already got on my plate and I've like, are you predetermining or estimating your hours on those tasks? And how, like, how do you know you're not overloading yourself when you're kind of um, adding these things to your to-do list? 
here, basically. <laughs> um, Holy so moly. That, yeah, that, that, it looks long. Um, so this is, I, I had to explain it last Sunday. This is an overview of every single task I have to do that I have planned to do. Um, I rarely come here because most of the time I look in my contextual dashboards, i.e. my YouTube, my blogging, or in academics, in biology, physiology, and then I have those tasks for that thing. Um, but this shows me everything. So every event that I have scheduled, every task that I need to do, be it a 10 second task or a an hour long task, whether it's a recording, a video or something, it shows here. Um, now, th this is the long list of tomorrow stuff that I need to add. Uh, it's Saturday. Then, Don't you take weekends off, Danny? <laughs> um, I, you, you can see down here, I, I actually play football on Saturday. Oh, OK, yeah. Soccer, football, <laughs> soccer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no i it's, it's funny i don't see this as work like i don't i don't I, i'm fine. just messing with you i do the same thing <laughs> yeah, no, but like it's, a, it's, it's like a general thing like a lot of people when they look at all the tasks i need to do they're like oh my god you're so busy i'm like no i'm not i'm uh, playing and, this is fun <laughs> exactly and people say how do you watch so many youtube videos or how are you always everywhere like i'm in facebook i'm in reddit i'm in their discord i'm in numerous facebooks uh, i'm commenting on youtube videos i watch every youtube video that has notion in the title um and they're like how do you time how do you do that i'm like it's fun like i i, I just do it it's just fun um mm -hmm. but yeah uh so this is kind of like a, a high up level but I, I plan out really far ahead, as you can see. Like, I have all my tasks planned for next week and the, the week after done. That is um, impressive. Yeah. <laughs> you, you'll see my, my YouTube thing in a minute. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so I when, when I have a project, I plan the tasks when I do the project. So, like, this is, this is going to be a workflow thing. Bear with me because I'm not going to be able to jump through my space quick enough to explain this. So... For example, we'll take YouTube because we're going to go there in a second. YouTube is an area. YouTube has a review frequency of seven days. So I review my YouTube area every seven days, which happens to be Sunday. So on Sunday, I will go into the area and I will plan out the videos for the week after I've last planned. I will then, in the, the process of creating those three projects, will put the tasks in the task database which will then show in all my task database. I then put those tasks to the date that I need to do them, which could be two, three, four, even five weeks ahead sometimes. Right. Um, and then I don't have to think about it. So like I've, I've planned, let's go into the YouTube space now and see how far I have actually planned. This is like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is so many A Sneak ideas. peek into what, yeah, into what Danny's got planned. <laughs> so many ideas. Um, it's it's gonna take a, a minute because yep yeah, there we go it's ninety eight projects. Oh <laughs> so that's moly! All, that's all the videos. Um, there's the tasks that are currently going. Notes here we it, it it's getting there. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah. And you you'll recognize the space. You've still got the notes database, which is here, and these are all ideas. That is the. YouTube template that I have in my notes database. It tags it with the area. So if I come into the filter, you can see there's the area tag. So only the notes that are associated with YouTube show up here. And have project is empty because if it's not empty, then the note is related to an actual video. Mm -hmm. Then I have projects, which in YouTube terms is a video. In blogging terms, it's a blog post. In academic terms, it's an essay. Yeah. These are here because they don't have a date on. When they have a date on, they show up in my calendar, which is here. Um, oh, that's so organized. <laughs> so you can see Monday, Wednesday, Friday are videos, and Sundays are streams. The color is the progress. So I don't have a progress bar. I use a traffic light system, I guess you could call it. The green tick is I'm done, or I haven't added any task to it. <laughs> um, so every every project backwards from from today should have a green tick. Then it works on a percentage basis because projects are across the board, um, and it will go from the bottom. It goes from the cross. So if we go to next month, and I'm going to fingers cross, I have some crosses. There we go. We've got some crosses in there. Um, <clears throat> so I've planned these videos, 
and I've added tasks and good. Um, and the cross basically says, I've done absolutely nothing. Then I've got a red dot saying I've done something. Orange dot done middle, yellow dot is more than middle, green dot is I'm pretty close to finishing. And then that one is done. Nice. And you can see like I've planned those projects out ahead uh, into wherever it was, what month are we in? October. So middle of October I'm planned for. <laughs> so that's like what, what five weeks ahead. And then I have, um, what's that? One, two, three, four. I have six video ideas. So that will be another two weeks. And then I have however many video ideas are there as well. So I'm planned until like next year. <laughs> uh, and it's just a case of like dragging, dragging, and then dragging the tasks down and done. Yeah, um, no, this is, um, Nate was just saying, I feel like there's a huge advantage to duplicating the same format of dashboard across all spaces, right? Everything's like pretty consistent. You just get into a flow, it's pretty easy. Um, you're making me question, I, like I, I have a content database that it, like I treat all the blog posts and content related stuff in a separate database, but um, there's something really appealing about the idea of unifying it, like just thinking of that as a project and unifying it with all the projects and having it in one database, kind of interesting. Also helps obviously with my projects area. Every yeah. project shows up there. So yeah. when I when I'm looking at how many projects I'm doing at one time, pro projects are related to clients. Clients is a, a separate database. That's a people database. Um, yeah. But I can see all the projects I'm doing uh, in my projects area. What I've done. What I'm actively doing. And then I have my projects all same sort of thing. Project calendar, task calendar. Um, so yeah. And going back to your original question, which is where we got to the tasks, uh, which is where we got here is my tasks, which is boom, 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 chugging down. There we go, uh, which is here. So you can see this is because the backlinks that were brought in, that's mm -hmm. that's the thumbnail for the video explaining the backlinks. Um, so that was due last week, but I haven't done it yet. So it's still showing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I have everything else. And you hopefully you can see a theme. Um, I research tasks on Monday. I script tasks on Tuesday. Audio record and screen record on Wednesday. Edit and schedule Thursday. Thumbnail Friday. And then I have the published tasks going wherever. Um, and it's consistent every week. That's so great. So when I, I have a couple of videos going over my process, but when, when I bring all the tasks in, the tasks will come in on a Saturday and then I would just click drag, 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 drag. Awesome. And a nice little thing that I have in here as well is my sorting. So I'm sorting by the due date of the project. So it means I, I do this the same with my dashboard. It means whatever task is at the top, the project is due earlier. So I know this video is due before this video. Mm -hmm. So I know this task is more important, essentially. Yep. Um, and it also means if I realize all oh, this week is really busy, I need to move some tasks. I can just go all the way across and just drag them down. Yeah. Because I know they're the least important tasks. Love it. And can you scroll up again? So you've got your projects is at the top. Okay, so project calendar, task calendar below that, and then lists at the top. Cool. Yeah, so notes I want to see straight away. The projects and tasks do flip in some spaces, but I can't think off the top of my head what it is now. <laughs> um, and for when I was studying, the task was at the top because the tasks were the lectures and I wanted to see the lectures before the assignments. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really um, great to see. But yeah, and then something something else actually to which is going to be the best way. I think the best way is probably this way. Um, is with the due date. I don't know about you, but having a due date is great. But sometimes I just want it to tell me, like, how long actually is it? Like, is it one week? Is it two weeks? <laughs> um, so I, ma I made this formula, uh, which tells me one week's two weeks. The tick means the project is in front of time, so I'm fine. And then it will show a red cross if it's behind time, because some projects are really flexible with time. So mm -hmm. I look at it and go, oh, it's, it's one week overdue. I should probably, like, reassign that project date. Um, obviously, YouTube videos aren't like that. Ass assignments definitely aren't like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it means that the due date, I, I've got the due date here, which is the due date that I'm rolling up in my tasks. And then I have the time left. And what I can do is I can roll up this into my tasks. I will show you the formula, but it is, it's, it's extremely nasty. Um, <laughs> and yeah, 
Uh, anyone wants to screenshot that, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not going to explain this one because there are too many nested nested ifs and yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, and I can roll this up to my task database, which is what I do. Uh, Roxana so says, I want, I want that time left formula. Yeah, we'll have to campaign Danny to share, share, share that little snippet with us. <laughs> I'm debating about putting month in there as well. Um, mm. But yeah, so you can see it here. So I know this video is due on the 30th of September, and that is two weeks and five days time. So, I'd, and yeah, and it for me, it just, it, just, it just makes more sense because I was finding when I was going 30th September, I would then look at the date and I'm like, it's nine, 10, 19 days. And it would, yeah, just notion, tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Uh, so yeah, uh, if I go back to my dashboard, I'll show you that I've sorted all the tasks as well similarly, but I have other sorts. Boom, boom, boom. Have any other questions come in, by the way? Um, no, they're not necessarily like about this specifically. It's like, will this be available to watch? Uh, how often do we host office hours? Is this going to be posted on YouTube? So yeah, we haven't had anything specific yet. Um, if anyone has any questions about Danny's setup or, or kind of what you're seeing here, uh, definitely put them in the chat. Just don't get me to remake that formula. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is this is the sort to my tasks, um, which allows me to go like top down. Yeah. Again, it's like it's the project due date is a, 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 at the top. Then I have the tag, and then I have the due date. So I know that the live stream, which is Sunday, is before the due date of this video. Um, I know my dissertation is due before these videos. Uh, I know that. These videos are due before this August summary, uh, which is a blog post, which is part of my notes processing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it just goes down, actually. Oh, there you go. There's the office hours, because I unticked it. <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll take that back off. Um, yeah, have you, have you got any like questions? I mean, I, I could go into like every single area. <laughs> No, I feel like uh, it would be super fun to do a live stream with you or you, like do a follow up session because I know there's just so much we could cover. Um, so I, I have a feeling this, this is just the first of many uh, videos for sure. So um, any advice for how you got started learning formulas for Notion? Any guides you'd recommend? Um, how I started got using like started using formulas in Notion is strength and conditioning relies a lot on periodization, which is my master's degree, and strength and conditioning coaches live in Excel. <laughs> um, so pivot tables are like you, know, you just have to know how to use pivot tables. You have to know formulas. You have to know how to work out tonnage, CV percents, MR like gradients, and all the rest of the numbers. So I actually kind of like unintentionally learned formulas through my Excel use since I was like nine. Um, and then Notion <laughs> formulas are just so easy uh, when compared. When you add regular expressions, not so much because then you bring coding in, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, go I got into formulas through Excel. Places to go to start learning formulas. Um, I mean, I would be a bad YouTuber if I didn't say my channel. Um, but the Red Gregory's, uh, yeah, Red Gregory, her channel does formulas as well. Um, I've done formulas on my channel. Murali shows formulas on his channel. He doesn't necessarily go in and explain them. Um, I'm trying to think who else on YouTube. We did have William, we had William Nuts yeah. on Office Hours and we did do like a 101 and then we also did a follow-up 201 and then we did a roll-up session. So that might be a good mm. review. And I think William Nutt has, he's got a blog post that I think yeah. kind of breaks it down in text too. So you, if you, the video is not your thing, you can kind of copy paste and just sort of get an overview. So lots of options. Just kind of have yeah. to figure out uh, how deep you want to go down that rabbit hole. I think the best way to learn formulas is to duplicate someone else's formula and then yeah. dissect it. Uh, like I've got in, in my in my public page, like my play page has turned into my free templates page. <laughs> um, so whenever I'm yeah. playing with anything, it's it's public. Um, so if you go into there, you'll, you'll see all the formulas. So actually, if I go in and quickly show you, I've, I've made this as easy as I can for people to look at what the formula is, um, and where it's used. So you can see here properties as a database blocks as a database formulas as a database and shortcuts as a database. 
Um, I'm going to go into here. So I have listed every single formula that's in Notion. Uh, what's Danny's public page? I don't use any of those uh, short, silly link things. So if you go into my YouTube channel, it's linked in my banner and linked in every single video. Uh, yeah, so I have all of the, the formulas here. And what I've done is I've related the, the formula every single time I've used it in a template. So you can see I've used the prop formula <laughs> 22 times. I've used the add 23 times, 15 times, etc. cetera. Um, so if we go into, actually, if is probably massive. I haven't looked at this for a while. Uh, where is the if function? I've missed the scroll past it. Yeah, it was above. Oh, there it is. If. 29. Yeah, that's, that's a fair amount. So let's have a look in here anyway. Um, what I would do is I would either go into my templates and just look at a template and go, oh, that's cool, or go into a formula and look for a template that's, that it's been used in. So uh, five beginner mistakes. Apparently, I used formulas in that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so this is the flashcards template. Awesome. Um, and what I would do is I would come into here, and then what you will see is all of the formulas that I've used, and you can go into the actual thing. Just duplicate this, go into the formula box, and just like take bits out, see what happens. Yeah. Um, so from a formula way. standpoint, see, it's really easy. <laughs> it's all functions, um, but it looks really long. Um, so just duplicate this page, and then go into, uh, actually, it wouldn't be that one. That one's really easy. <laughs> Minus one from card count. Um, so yeah, go into here, go into the formula property, which is this one. Is it this one or is it the other one? No, it's the other one. I did that last time as well. Yeah, go into here and take things out, add things in, change numbers, and just try and work out what happens. That would be like how I would advise learning formulas, is just mm -hmm. duplicate ones that you know work and work out why they work. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. It takes a bit of play and just kind of, okay, like, what is this property doing? Okay. And then again, checking out those, um, like, again, William Nutt's breakdown of like, okay, this statement's doing this. Okay, what is the slice doing? It takes a bit to wrap your head around. But uh, I don't use a ton of formulas in my space, but I do. I really do like the the dates stuff just to even show those visual signifiers, like the the red, green, yellow. Like, I'm definitely a visual learner and thinker too so on the calendar just to be able to see those at a glance is super helpful so i really like those awesome i think things. something something else that could be used from a student perspective if other people use notion that that you're at, at uni with um so yeah uh this <laughs> this this little face here um is a project i'm actually working on with jonathan so we're potentially starting a podcast um, it's thinking about it because like we, we talk so much anyway, why not just like let people listen to us like randomly, <laughs> randomly blabber. Um, but this, so we have a different space. We have a team workspace that isn't, isn't in mine. Um, but I have linked that, that database in my space using the same sort of dashboard. So this is, this is not my space. This is notion nerds podcast space, right? So we've got all of this sort of stuff. Um, he's got his task database here, which I can't see because that's in his private space and he can't see this because this is my private space. <laughs> this is a different workspace and I've jumped to that workspace using my navbar and I'm going to jump back. Working with like other students, if you're like in a flat or if you're working on an assignment together or anything like that, linking spaces together or anything like working together that's one way of doing it apart from sharing the page. And then you have like the shared page in the sidebar and things like that. Something else linked with this is here is my area. So this is my podcast area, which is in my space. So this is in my workspace. So I have the review, have the review frequency and the reminders. And you see, I added this yesterday. So there's only one reminder. Um, but I have this database. So instead of having a projects database, I have the projects database of another workspace in my space. So if you're a student and you've got a calendar for who's going to do the laundry, even though it's never really done, who's doing the washing up? <laughs> really done. Um, yeah. Who's supposed to be doing it? Uh, <laughs> you, you can have that in a flat workspace that everyone can sort of like edit and go to. Um, and you can link that in your space like I've done here. Um, 
so you can see what everyone else can see, but no one like they don't have to see your personal tasks, your personal projects and things like that. Um, and I guess that kind of works on like a, a business standpoint as well, just like linking other people's things in. Um, I would imagine I imagine you've probably utilized that quite a lot, quite, quite a lot. Definitely. Yeah, no, this is really awesome. This yeah. is and just, just the beginning. <laughs> I feel like there's. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the same dashboard. Like this is my task yeah. database, which is the same. This yeah. is my, well, this would be my projects, but it's another project. And then I got my notes. These are my notes. These are the podcast notes. So what I can do, it's really simple, is if I made a note, I can attach it, again, area, attach it to podcast, drag it in there, and then I can drag it down into the podcast area. So Jonathan can then see the ideas I had. But I'm not gonna show him all my ideas because that's gonna get filled out pretty quick. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Oh, and that's awesome. This, this is a whole workflow thing, but I won't go through that. That's yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Now this is super, super dense, Danny. And uh, what we'll do is we'll definitely add your um, YouTube channel to the call to action link below. I know a couple of folks have added some links in the chat. So definitely Google Danny Hatcher and Notion. You will find Danny's YouTube page. Uh, lots of templates that he's provided to get you started. And um, this is awesome, Danny. I'd love to to have you on again and go deeper into some of this stuff. It's it's really great to get to, to peek inside how your Notion brain works. Well, I'm just gonna move you back over so I'm not looking at <laughs> yeah, it's, so Something I, th I feel like I should say is like uh, the, the podcast, I added that area yesterday. Um, I added the daily reminders database maybe a month ago. Um, my recurring task formula has changed dramatically over the last two months so i mean we say it all the time notion you're never you're never finished yeah. um, and when, when i come on well if when i come on next time guaranteed the, the nav bar will look different it's like <laughs> there will be more spaces different spaces formulas may have appeared different colors may be in there like it, it's always evolving so i would go like if you're starting with notion if you're using notion literally like have have your your skeleton structure my skeleton structure is pants Yep. Um, <laughs> and then and then build from there. So as you saw, the, the student workspace, there are three properties in the task database. My database has 11, 12, um, because of all the other stuff that's integrated. But I started off with a, a task list. Yeah. And then it adds on. Um, and something I think I put in the Facebook, the Notion Made Simple Facebook group. I cannot remember what conversation it was. I've been in a lot. Um, but it was... I, I only build in my space when I see a friction point. Yeah. Like if there is a friction point and I'm like, this is annoying this me. I, yeah, like this is annoying me or can I do this a different way or how else can I do this? Then I'll build in my space. If there isn't one, I don't. I, I will just make random templates. <laughs> and, exactly. And <laughs> random if you've got a lot of spare time, great, go for it. But uh, a lot of us have- When you're planning lot. things out. Yeah. So, yeah. and to- it's like to this isn't to boast or brag, but to give you an idea of what Notion has helped me do is in in this time, like in the last four months, because that's when I've really started to ramp up stuff. I I have one blog post every day. I have three videos a week. I have a live stream a week. Um, I engage on seven Facebook groups every day. The Reddit Notion every day. The Discord Notion every day. I'm on Twitter every day. <laughs> um, I watch every single YouTube video that has Notion in the title, either Notion or Notion app, because I filter the YouTube search for it, put it in my watch later. Um, and I'm also doing my dissertation right now, final research dissertation. Uh, and then sort of like to add on to that, I'm basically becoming an entrepreneur business person at the same time. So I'm having to learn all of that stuff as well. So I'm listening to podcasts, watching videos, reading articles, following people like Tiago and Ali and talking with people as well. I'm doing all of that and still finding time to play around with Notion because Notion's given me that that organization, that planning. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just to give you an idea of like this, the scope of what you can control with an app with the right mindset, planning and system. I love that. And I, I think it's just... A <laughs> 
I think it's just a reminder, right? Like it doesn't start out like that. And I know a lot of folks get really intimidated at the beginning, but uh, take it piece by piece, explore. I think solve, solve for the most important specific use case, whether it's your task management or like tracking your lecture notes, like just start small and you can iterate your way there. And uh, yeah, that's it's really awesome, Danny. Super impressive. I'm impressed by your content schedule. I'm definitely going to be going to make some changes this weekend in my own setup. So uh, thank you so much for coming on. We'll definitely have you on again. And uh, otherwise, make sure again, to check out Danny's YouTube channel and we'll have to check out your live stream this weekend. <laughs> yeah, it should be good fun. Hopefully, John and I can uh, have a similar conversation, similar similar good conversation as we've had. So Amazing. Well, thanks, everyone, for coming, too. We've got more academic content coming up next week. And again, over the coming weeks, all of September is all back to school themed. So um, thanks, everybody. Really appreciate you staying on long. And uh, thanks again, Danny. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.